I want to talk about love bombing today. For those of you who are following my channel, <clears throat> you've heard the term love bombing before. And if you Google the term, um, there there is a, a plethora of, of information describing what love bombing is. But for all intents and purposes, love bombing is excessive affection um, displayed toward a newcomer to you know a, a cult a controlling organization and these excessive displays of instant affection are um, what draws you in and it's overwhelming that's why they use the term love bombing because you are completely bombed um, with with this, you know, attention and affection and adoration just for showing up, just for being there, which should be the first red flag. And I want to delve deeper into love bombing. Um, my first video on this channel actually was about love bombing and it's the one I believe that has the second highest views. Um, love bombing is a important topic because this can happen in many different types of scenarios and the more you understand what love bombing is and the more you know how to protect yourself against it because do not be deceived. Love bombing is extremely seductive. You may not even see it coming, but even if you do see it coming, it's so seductive that even in the face of all that weirdness, you still get sucked in. Because as human beings, we're, we're social creatures we desire at our most instinctive level to belong, to be loved. So love bombing taps into that primal need that we have. And so it's very hard to resist even when we're staring right at it, it right in the face. And you know, we, we know something's off. But with love bombing, cults do this and Cults can be many kinds of groups and organizations. I'm going to save that for a, a different discussion because it deserves its own um, focus. But just understand a cult can be things that you really, you really may not realize that it's a cult, which is why I talk so much about cults and the characteristics of cults. And I share uh, references to other sources for you to research what a cult is on your own. Because the more you understand about what a cult is or attributes of a cult, the more you can identify a group or organization or any, you know, any scenario you walk into, you can identify it like that. Now, Love bombing, like I said, is very seductive. And, you know, I, as if you follow my channel, I am a cult survivor of the International Church of Christ or ICOC, currently goes by the name ICC. But this particular Christian Bible based uh, non denominational evangelical church cult they specialize in love bombing and I remember being an 18 year old college freshman walking into a church service and how the love bombing took place and one of the things that that you have to uh, watch out for is this this intense affection that's just showered upon you without any w without any cause I mean and what it taps into is 
our need to just be loved unconditionally. And love bombing, I believe on a subconscious level, our subconscious minds process love bombing as unconditional love. You know, we all want to be loved without having to do something for someone, right? It's like we want to be loved for who we are, not for what we do or what we provide, right? If we're honest. So love bombing does just that. It meets that need, although on a very superficial level. People are smiling at you. Everyone wants to meet you, hug you. Um, they want to uh, sit with you and talk to you and, you know, they want to get together after church or after the gathering of the group. They want to spend time with you and they think you're pretty awesome. The ICOC back in the 90s when I was, you know, first came, the word awesome was, was the catchphrase for everything. It was like, awesome, you're awesome, that's awesome, it's awesome. He's awesome, you know. It was just so overused. It was it was a a loaded loaded term as cult experts would call it. So um love bombing is dangerous in that respect because it taps into our need to be unconditionally loved. So we just show up where, you know, we just show up to the church service like I did. You show up to, you know, the Amway meeting, whatever it is. And people are just breaking their backs, trying to meet with you and, and trying to get your phone number and, and smiling and hugging and just, as the church would say, fellowshipping with you. They want to get to know you and you feel like, hey, wow, they like me. They really like me. Even though your conscious mind may be skeptical or even weirded out by this behavior, right? There is still, yeah, that part of you, the deep down, you have to be consciously aware of that need in you. So when you meet someone and they're overly zealous um, to, to, you know, uh, to meet you, to get together, they want you to switch fo swap phone numbers. Here are a few tips I think that will help uh, safeguard us from getting sucked in this to love bombing again. And believe me, even though um, I'm a cult survivor and I'm, I'm a, a lot wiser now, I'm still vulnerable to things and so are, so are all of us. We just have to, you know, understand that, that we, you know, we're, we're not all the you know these big bad tough people even though we may say to ourselves that'll never happen to me again I won't fall for that crap love bombing is interesting it, it, it manifests in different forms and sometimes it can be somewhere or something that we walk into that we just weren't prepared for so again here are a few things I think that will safeguard all of us and one is to, want, as I said, be consciously aware, understand that as a human being, you are a social creature. So you will feel that pull when someone loves bombs, love bombs you. And you may feel tempted, you know, to, to let your guard down, to give that person at that, that retreat or that church service your phone number, uh, you know, to to agree to get together for, for lunch. Which brings me to the second red flag to look out for. We have to understand and be in tune with ulterior motives. We have to have our spidey senses always fine-tuned, you know, our intuition, if you will that we, our spirit, for those of you who are Christians, you know, who are cult survivors, the Holy Spirit, be tuned into the guidance from the Holy Spirit, that you can, that you can 
quickly identify, you know, when someone is being sincere or insincere. And here are some questions to ask yourself. When you, if usually when you're love bombed, right, it works like this. Someone invites you to an event and you attend the event and that's when you meet all these people and they love bomb you. So either you don't go accept the invitation to this event when the person asks you to go and they say, oh, it's so great because usually that's how cults work. They're like, oh, such and such group is so great. I just love my church. I love my MLM. I love my whatever. And and then you got to come. You got to come. And, and being an ex-cult member, for those of you, you know what that feels like because you used to do it to people. So be aware, okay, why is this person trying to get me to come to this thing? It doesn't matter what your relationship is with the person. You could be best of friends or, you know, your coworker, whatever. Just be be tuned into them trying to get you to this event. You got to come. This group is great. Then it's always a red flag when they start bigging up something that they're a part of. And then, and then they're trying to get you to go. And when they ask you invite you out you got to ask questions you either you can either do one or two things either flat out say no and, and and keep it pushing or you ask a lot of questions about what this group is about what do they stand for i mean ask in-depth questions to because the person won't really be able to ask, answer them they'll give you some patent answers that they've been brainwashed to give so it'll sound really like salesy whatever they tell you and you would know and you you can tell okay this is suspicious this is a love bombing event that I need to avoid and I'm thinking here that those two things so asking questions saying no or if you do decide to go and for some reason this person was really slick and, and they, they managed to convince you to go with them for whatever reason, sometimes that happens. You just be aware of how people are just instantly talking to you. And always keep in your mind why. Like what do they want? And what is what are they after? Like, why are they so into you in this moment? You know, they don't know you. What is the common, you know, thread in, in this scenario? And the common thread is that you are at this event in this cult and they're trying to get you to sign up, to join, to visit, to donate. They're trying to extract something from you be it time resources money you know um, devotion so always keep that in mind in these type of situations that what are what is their motive you know um, what what are they trying to do if they want to meet up for lunch Find out, like, why. Like, is it to, are they going to do a Bible study with you? Or are they going to do some kind of, are they trying to sell you some some product? Like, what are, what is their motives? Because when you, when you look at it through that lens, then you can really protect yourself. Because you know, okay, they're not really trying to get to know me. And, and you, you know, and, and then you can skip all the psychological mind games that, that, will proceed to happen once you agree to to talk to them on the phone or meet up for lunch or come back to a Sunday service next week, you know. So definitely have these things in mind with love bombing and be aware of yourself and your needs. And sometimes I have to step back because maybe you, you find yourself 
giving your phone number out or agreeing to something in, in I find it help, helpful just to step back for a few days and just marinate on that and think about it and go, hmm, does this feel right? Like, what is it with these people? Why do I feel drawn to do this? If you feel this like impulsive need to belong to this group, that the love bombing is, is, is pulling at you, is magnetizing you, step back and analyze it and think, well, what is it that I'm searching for? What is it triggering in me that makes me vulnerable to this? Because, you know, and so finally, I'll say be truthful. If you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest with anyone. And be honest with yourself about why you, f you need, you know, to belong to this group or you feel tempted or, or this love bombing is drawing you in. Why? Why do you feel that need? What is what is in you that I'm not good? I don't believe it's something wrong with you or wrong with me. I think it's something that it's just what is it that we are looking for that we feel that we don't have? What is it? If it is it something unmet, a need that's unmet in us from childhood or whatever in our past what is the thing that we feel is lacking that makes us so open to these kind of love bombing situations and once you begin to do some inner exploration i think it will help safeguard you and me from getting deceived by you know people being overly nice to us and you know, and I, I want to say too, this is specifically to love bombing scenarios. I don't believe in walking around life being cynical about every human being you meet. But when you come from a cult, your your defenses are so um, destroyed, you have to sort of swing to the other end for a while to find some balance, and you have to have self preservation. Um, reactivate it in you and we have to preserve ourselves we have to have some defenses up we can't tell strangers our, our deepest darkest secrets you know like in the cult everything um, we, we were told to confess everything in the ICOC so um, you know to people who didn't have our best interest in mind so always deal with people this is what I always encourage people to do. Always in, always deal with anyone you meet as do they have my best interest in mind. And depending on what the answer to that is, deal with them accordingly. You know, if the person doesn't have your best interest in mind, you may not want to do business with them. Or you may want to keep them at arm's length. You may want to, not, they, you may not want them to be your your best friend, you know. And part of this uh, life after being in a cult is about finding not only finding ourselves, but figuring out who other people are in relation to us, and how we have healthy interactions with people. Uh, and based on where we are and where they are. So that's all I've got for today. Until next time.